Welcome to Damn Good Movie Memories with your host, Ryan Davis. This podcast is the cure for your long commute and super boring work day. The following stunts were performed by professionals, so for your safety and the protection of those around you, Paramount Pictures and MTV Films insist that neither you nor your dumb little buddies attempt any of what you are about to see. Hey there, it's Brian Davis, and for this week's episode, we're going to cover Jackass the Movie from 2002. The studio, Paramount Pictures, release date October 25th, 2002, the running time 85 minutes, and of course, it was rated R. The budget, $5 million, and the box office took in $64.2 million that was domestic, making it the 45th ranked movie of 2002. Rotten Tomatoes gives it 48% rotten from 97 reviews. Their critics' consensus is there's a good chance you'll be laughing hysterically at one stunt, but getting grossed out by the next one in this big screen version of the controversial MTV show. Now, for those that think I have some high ideals and snobbery when it comes to films that I enjoy and what I will review on this podcast, I believe that this episode will show that I have a wide net of films that I do enjoy. I have no shame in admitting that I love Jackass. I love the original TV show, and I was stoked about when the movie was first released back in 2002. And look, you either enjoy seeing amazingly stupid stunts and pranks, or you don't. And if you don't, we'll go back to quote-unquote normal films next week. All right, the main cast. Now, I'll cover this when we get into the film itself. Of all the big players, I would say Johnny Knoxville received the most mainstream fame because he's he's the one that ended up in the big-budget Hollywood films after the success of Jackass, you know, movies like Men in Black 2, Walking Tall, and The Dukes of Hazard. The director, Jeff Tremaine. Directing-wise, Tremaine's career had mostly focused on Jackass projects. However, for those that are into 1980s hard rock, he did direct the Motley Crue biopic for Netflix in 2018 called The Dirt, which was based on the book. And it sort of makes sense since Motley Crue was essentially the 80s version of musical jackass in their prime. Okay, let's get into the film. So the movie, like almost all the movies that are created from TV shows, are essentially longer episodes. For Jackass, instead of, say, 15 or 20 stunts in a regular 30-minute show, you get 55 to 60 in the film. And if you didn't like the TV show, you definitely will not like the movie. <laughs> but if you like male nudity, this might be a great film for you. And with that, let's go through the list of stunts. Well, first, the movie starts with a epic beginning, with the operatic song O Fortuna playing, (laughs) while a slow motion shot of the entire group appearing through these huge clouds of smoke while they're riding together in a giant shopping cart and just beating the shit out of each other. The gang includes Johnny Knoxville, Bam Margera, Ryan Dunn, Steve-O, Wee Man, Chris Pontius, Preston Lacey, Dave England, and Aaron McGannahey. Explosions of concrete go off while riding down the street, and eventually they crash into what looks like an empty fruit stand. Now, they came up with this opening, hoping to trick the audience into thinking that they sold out and went Hollywood. But everyone ended up loving it, so, so much for that. The shopping cart in the opening sequence was originally built and used in the film The Incredible Shrinking Woman in 1981. Okay, the actual stunts. So the first one is Rent-A-Car Crash-Up Derby. Johnny Knoxville rents a car in Portland... And, and then, as the title says, absolutely destroys the vehicle. The beginning has a hidden camera from his glasses while the employee inspects the cars, you know, for existing dents and scratches. Johnny then spray paints the number three on it, breaks the windows, adds a few more inner additions, including two blow-up dolls, and then proceeds to kill the car while Slayer's Angel of Death plays. Basically, imagine real-life bumper cars. 
While that's amusing to watch, the payoff is taking the car back to the auto rental place. Oh, fuck! I guess we didn't reinforce the windshield. That fucking kept missing by that much. That's why you got the real bars behind you. No, this is your guy's car. I, I ran it from you earlier. Yeah, I hit a dog. A dog. Oh. Come on in. I had a accident, as you can see. Yeah, I was. I, I, I mean, I drink. I just black out. So. I, um, Were you drinking or anything? Yeah, I had a little, to be honest. Is there any license plates on? There was. Yeah. Well, hopefully you guys will incur some of the cost. Oh, no. Because I rented it from you guys fair and square. Yeah. I don't want to get stuck with the whole yeah. charge of it. Well, you are going to get stuck with the entire thing. Well, I don't think I should. I think you guys should help. No. You declined any additional coverage right there. You declined it. Yeah, but that's just paperwork, you know? That's a legal contract. Yeah, well, I was a little... I was... I had a few to drink when I signed that, too, so we're going to have to get this worked out. Yeah, you're going to have to pay for that car. Well, you're going to have to help me pay for that car. Uh, no, we don't do that. I returned it with the full of tank of gas. You returned it demolished. Well, it's got a full tank of gas. That's the least of our words right now is the gas. Oh. This is an unmitigated outrage. I've never seen anything like this before. What does that mean? No one's ever done that. Well, I can't pay for it. Well, you're going to have to. Well, I ain't. <clears throat> Look, I'm going to let you two guys work it out, and I'm going to go outside, but um, that car's going to have to be paid for. Yeah, but that's just paperwork. <laughs> so Knoxville grabs his two blow-up dolls and runs away to the disbelief of the rental car guy. Good way to start the movie. Next, you have human bowling. Just like it sounds, the guys take over a bowling alley and ride down the lanes face down on skateboards into the pins. The best part comes when Ryan Dunn is riding down the lane and gets hit square in the nuts when Johnny Knoxville decides to roll the bowling ball down the lane. Next, the muscle stimulator. Johnny, Chris, Aaron, and Dave put these very intense muscle stimulators on various parts of their bodies and crank them up to have these high-voltage shocks. Their cheeks, their fingers, their pectorals, and the coup de grace, the taint of Dave England. <laughs> and, of course, Chris Pontius's balls. <laughs> the screams are funnier than anything. Next, fatty fall down. Since the beginning of film history, fat people falling down has been a staple of comedy. And here, Preston does just that. He has a water bottle and a plate of food. He sits on a park bench and then the pit bench tips over and he falls over with the food right on top of him. An older gentleman kind of attempts to help him, but the payoff is that Preston has split his pants or he had him pre-split. So you get a full view of his butt crack. And that's always a winner, too, for comedy. <laughs> Preston then runs away to the bewilderment of the old man. Golf cart antics. This is probably more fun to partake in than actually watch it because the guys are just driving golf carts recklessly at a miniature golf course, and they crash through fences into each other. And they're going off ramps. Johnny Knoxville actually gets injured, probably a concussion on the final crash driven by Bam Margera. They originally had electric-powered carts that didn't really go fast, but once they got gas-powered... That's when things got dangerous and very interesting. Party Boy Japan. So if you know Chris Pontius, he basically takes his stripper routine to Japan. He will start by wearing a warm-up suit like a basketball player and then go to a random spot and rip off the warm-up suit down to a G-string and then start dancing to the horror and amusement of everyone around him. For this prank, he goes to an electronics store, gets the clerk to play some techno on the speakers and then does his thing. He then steals the hat of a police officer while dancing for him. Board break. Super short one, no pun intended, as Wee Man, who is a dwarf, 
uh, tries to break a stack of boards karate style with his forehead, and he um, doesn't break them. <laughs> alligator nipple bite. Johnny has his nipple bitten by a baby alligator. I'm assuming this will please the S&M crowd. We then have alligator tightrope, where Steve-O walks a tightrope with alligators below him. And to add to the stunt, he's wearing a jock strap filled with meat. No such thing as failure, Steve. Got you got it. Uh, one thing I know is good tightrope walking. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh You're yes. Cool. You're good. Oh, oh, put the chicken on him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit. There you go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Go, keep going, Steve-O. Oh, shit! Oh, yeah! Oh, my God! 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 Fireworks wake up. When I first saw this in the theater, this was the stunt that made me laugh the most. It cracked me up so much. So Bam Margera decides to put fireworks in his parents' bedroom while they're fast asleep. And then he does the same thing to his dad's car before he goes to work early, early in the morning. It's absolutely priceless. And then you get a shot of outside the house and you can only see the flashes going off. It's so good. <laughs> I'm Bam Margera and my parents are dead asleep. It's 12.42 right now and Phil has to be at work at 5 in the morning. So he's trying to get a good night's sleep and I'm going to go wake his ass up. Tommy. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> so you got to be up for five in the morning tonight. Six o'clock, got to be at work. Yo, here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Getting out of there. There's shit all over the goddamn How am I going to work now? 
Now, the original plan was for the van to have it completely flipped over when he left for work that day, but then they would have had to drain all the fluid from the car, plus the workplace wouldn't allow it, so that was nixed. And I think the fireworks are way, way better, in all honesty. The Shoplifter. Johnny Bam and music video director Spike Jones get done up in professional prosthetic masks so they look like old men. Then they walked around town acting like jackasses, knocking over each other, crashing their motorized scooters into each other, and then falling off their treadmills. Then Johnny decides to go into a grocery store and openly try to steal everything in the store because who's going to stop an old man? The stunt would eventually turn into a full-length film called Bad Grandpa. I was Lon Chaney's lover. (laughs) What makes this even more hilarious is that Knoxville didn't even know who the famous actor was from the early 1920s. Of course, he was a fan of of the opera. He just saw his name on the Walk of Fame in Hollywood, which was next to the store he was thrown out of. (laughs) Hardware store crap. Dave England decides to take a dump in one of the display toilets at a hardware store. Unfortunately, the timing wasn't right on the first attempt, and he instead craps his pants in the van before they get there. (laughs) To the delight of everyone who jumps out of the van, uh, the camera guys end up throwing up, and Dave does finally pull off the prank later in the day as he sits in front of everyone doing his business. Clipper cam. This is when the guys sneak up on people and shave the back of their heads when they're not looking. Mouse traps. Aaron crawls and rolls across a floor filled with mouse traps while wearing Mickey Mouse ears. It took 23 takes for Aaron to get the intro for the mouse trap stunt right. It got to the point where Johnny Knoxville got frustrated with Aaron and almost introduced the stunt for him. The bungee wedgie. Rab himself, that's his name, jumps from a tree in which he's been held up by a pair of tidy whities The first time, the underwear rips. The second time, though, he hilariously stays held up by the underwear, though it's four pairs of underwear bunched together. Riot control test. So Johnny gets shot by projectiles used by police to get rioters to back off. It's lethal if you get hit in the heart, even if he's wearing a bulletproof vest. So he decides to take one in the abdomen with no protection, which gives him an instant welt, which progressively gets worse as we were shown in the weeks ahead. Now, the first attempt at the stunt was not included in the final cut of the film as the shooter actually missed Johnny, which freaked him out because he didn't want to get hit in the wrong spot. And because of legal reasons, if this part was left in and Johnny was accidentally killed, the producers could be sued for criminal liability. The Big Cone. Wee Man hides inside of a giant cone in Japan and walks around the streets to the amusement of the pedestrians. No brakes. Johnny and Spike Jones in their old men makeup ride their motorized scooters down a steep street and then yell their brakes are out. A good Samaritan goes to check on Spike when he stops, and then Spike asks him to push him back up the street so he can go again. (laughs) 
ass kicked by a girl. Ryan Dunn fights, and I use that term loosely, a, a Japanese professional female kickboxer, and he gets absolutely annihilated. Tropical pole vaulting. Steve-O pole vaults into palm trees, volleyball nets, and raw sewage. Steve-O then got a serious infection after the filthy moat jump. <laughs> These guys probably caused COVID. Shopping cart attack. Aaron tries to skateboard on a snow disc and then gets blindsided by a shopping cart. Night pandas. While the song Turning Japanese by the Vapors plays, the guys dress up in panda outfits and skateboard around Tokyo and wreak havoc. Rocket skates. Johnny rolls down a street with bottle rockets on the back of his roller skates. He looks like he's dodging bullets when they go off. And this was actually shot in England. Roller disco truck. The guys get a moving truck and have a disco roller skate party in the back. But then Preston is the one driving the vehicle like a maniac in an empty parking lot and the guys go flying all over the place. Wasabi shooters. Steve-O decides to snort wasabi like doing a line of coke. He does two lines and then <laughs> pukes. <laughs> all the while, the sushi chef continues preparing sushi in the background. Oddly shaped sumo wrestlers. Preston and Wee Man dressed as, like sumo wrestlers are running around Tokyo with Preston chasing Wee Man. It's the fat man chasing a dwarf. The gong. The guys carrying a giant gong sneak up behind random pedestrians and smash the gong, which scares the crap out of the unsuspecting person. Chris Pontius then takes the sumo wrap off the guy holding the gong so he's bare ass walking around town. Sick of the fans, Steve-O decides to jump off a mini trampoline and then crashes into a ceiling fan inside of his apartment. April's alligator. Bam puts a live alligator inside his house to scare his mom. Bam also accomplishes his goal of getting his mom to say fuck on camera. Now, the original idea was to have skunks instead of gators. Wee Clippers. Wee Man gets a chunk of his hair shaved off when he's not expecting it. The Handrail. I'm here with Eric Costin and Clyde Singleton, and today I'm going to 50-50 this rail, and tr or try to. So this thing's long. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> Is he gonna go? He's gonna go somewhere. He's going. He's going, yeah. My impression of Johnny Knoxville. Something like this. <laughs> oh, my face! I'm Johnny Knoxville, and I'm going to grind this rail. Ready, set, go. I can't believe you got that far. You I can't believe you got this far. I can't believe. I can't believe. 
Johnny lands awkwardly on his hip, but he actually makes it all the way down, just not on the board like the pros did. Jacuzzi, quick clip of Preston getting out of the jacuzzi and his tidy white is drinking a beer. Paper cuts, and oof, this is, I hate, I've always hated this one. This is one I still can't watch today. They basically decide to paper cut various parts of their bodies on purpose, like in between their fingers and tongues, and I, I couldn't skip it in the theater because I had no idea what was coming, but on DVD, I skip it every time. The fortune teller. Chris Pontius goes to a street fortune teller and then strips and dances in front of him. Sweaty fat fucks. Dressed up in fat suits, Bam and two professional bikers, Tony Hawk and Matt Hoffman, skateboard and BMX in an indoor track while Sir Mexalot's baby got back plays. Lots of falling and crashing, and Matt Hoffman actually broke his wrist and got a concussion but kept going. Grandpa workout. The grandpa ones always crack me up. This one, Johnny is doing curls with a bar and then hilariously falls over to the horror of another gym member who is more concerned with the well-being of the weight bar rather than the old man that just collapsed in front of him. (laughs) Department store boxing. So remember the boxer Butterbean? Well, he decides to box Johnny in the middle of a store in front of shoppers who have absolutely no idea what's going on. Butterbean lands a, a bunch of haymakers and literally knocks Johnny out. And then we get to see Johnny get his head stitched up up close. And by knockout in the first round, new champion, Butterbean. Woo, yeah! <laughs> Where are we going, Knoxville? The hospital. What the hell are we doing that for? I don't know. Apparently I have a big gash in my head and I think I'm a little concussed. <laughs> oh, you should give me a shot? Yeah. yeah. You okay? Mm-hmm. We got one more to go, buddy. Yes, sir. And you're a free man. Thank you. You're going to be not feeling great the next 24 hours. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Okay. Cooper. You'll probably see me in <laughs> two or three days. Sir Marcus, one of the non-regulars named Brandon, rides like a medieval jouster on a bicycle and crashes into a convenience store. Fish wank. Steve-O and Chris find out that if you rub a sea cucumber, white threads are released from the cucumber. So guess what the guys decide to do underwater. (laughs) Whale shark gummer. Steve-O and Chris put on shorts filled with shrimp and then jump in (laughs) into the ocean and go snorkeling while whale sharks swim around them and try to get at their shorts. Tidal wave. Johnny gets pummeled with a huge wave of water and he gets tossed about 50 feet. Back tattoo. Steve-O gets a tattoo of his own face on his back. Off-road tattoo. With singer Henry Rollins driving, Steve-O gets a tattoo while going through an extremely bumpy ride in a Jeep. Of course, Black Flag's drinking and driving is playing. Amazingly, the outcome is not the worst tattoo I've ever seen. It initially looks like a three-eyed, drunk, smiley face, but once it heals, it looks like an ant farm in a circle. (laughs) The merry-go-round. Aaron goes on a little kitty merry-go-round that you would find at a play yard. It's spun around super fast when it's attached by a chain to a pickup truck. After getting off, Aaron stumbles around and then gets the back of his head shaved by clippers. This leads to a montage of a variety of times Aaron gets nailed by the clippers. Ass rockets. Steve-O puts bottle rockets in his butt and shoots them off a rooftop. Chris then ties one to his penis and does the same thing. (laughs) BMX tug of war. Ryan Dunn rides a bicycle that has a long bungee cord attached to Preston, who's sitting on a couch. Once Ryan flies off the ramp, he lands into a patch of cactuses while Preston goes flying off the couch. Grandpa falls asleep. I, again, I do love the grandpa stunts. This time, Spike Jones rides his motorized st- scooter in the middle of a crosswalk at a stoplight and then acts like he's fallen asleep. One of the drivers gets out of his car to help him, and then Spike slowly rolls backwards to the sidewalk. Yellow snow cone. Remember the old adage not to eat the yellow snow? Yeah, don't. The best part about this stunt is that Aaron randomly gets kicked in the nuts. We kick. Short but sweet, we man kicks himself in the forehead. <laughs> Bathroom beating. Besides the grandpa pranks, Bam torturing his family is also high on my enjoyment list. In this stunt, while Phil, Bam's dad, tries to take a dump, Bam rushes in on him and then hits him over the head and then rips rips his shirt off. Golf 
course, Airhorn. This might be my second favorite behind Bam setting off the fireworks in his house. I don't know about you, but nothing makes me laugh harder than seeing a bunch of uptight, pretentious golfers get annoyed beyond belief with air horns going off in their backswing. And as George Carlin brilliantly said in one of his stand-up specials, we should use the land wasted on all the golf courses throughout the world and put homeless shelters in place of them. Okay, this is called the golf course air horn. When people tee off, when they're coming down with their uh, swing, we're going to blow these air horns. Here she goes again. No, is there another one? (laughs) She's still hit it pretty good. Lost your club. Sorry. Didn't I tell you I was gonna come over here and kick your ass for that? What? I'm sorry, I got bursitis. You got bursitis? Yeah. So that means you gotta play with a horn. It helps. I'll give you something to play with, pal. Sorry, it won't happen again. The two angry gentlemen who were the victims of the golf course air horn stunt would originally not sign the release form to be featured in the movie until the production crew took them out for a few drinks, and then the two guys eventually agreed to give their permission. Mountain lion slap. Chris gets slapped by a mountain lion in a cage. Chris is dressed up in a panda suit. The burglars. Johnny and Bam crash through the ceiling of a random office building acting like they just robbed a bag full of diamonds. All of the office workers stand around looking stunned, but one dude gets totally scared and races out of the office and down the street. (laughs) Butt x-ray. Ryan puts a toy car deep up his rectum, which is housed by a condom because you might as well protect yourself. Even Steve-O passed on this one. Ryan then goes to the doctor for an x-ray and the facial expression from the nurse is priceless. I'm Ryan. What can I do for you? I was partying last night with some frat guys. I passed out. I must have fallen down and broken something because I haven't been able to walk right since. We're going to take X right now. Okay. To be sure. This is comfy. Hold your breath. Don't move. Es un carrito. Un carrito juguete. Estuvieron un par ayer y todo el mundo pasado y se estaban temblando unos a los otros y eso. Estaban todos drogados ya. Estaban drogados anoche. ¿Verdad? I have no idea. That's not part of you. That's something extra. I would have known if I ate that. No, you, you won't be able to swap that. That's it's a car toy. Well, how did a car toy get there? Maybe you stuck it up your ass. I didn't stick anything up my ass. <sighs> Have you ever seen anything like that? No, i never seen that in there. <sighs> uh, see, it's a toy car all over, but no, never in somebody's rectum. You can't get it out? You don't have to? No, I, I'm a physician, but I practice this, x-ray only. You think maybe I can just you know, poop it out? Uh, you won't be able to poop it out. In fact, it will hurt you. In fact, I, I don't think it's even good for you that you poop it out. What will happen if you take uh, X-Lax? Will that help? 
No, they think exactly, but he gets a lot of diarrhea, but no cough. You just go to the doctor, you don't talk to anybody, you have a good friend, to the boyfriend, or to work. You don't tell nobody, all right? He already knows that too many people. I appreciate it. Thank you for taking care of me. Thanks, okay. Thanks again. The first x-ray office just started laughing, so they recommended another place, which is what you saw in the movie. And to translate what the doctor was saying in Spanish on the phone, it's a little toy car. They were at a party yesterday and everyone passed out, and they were having sex with each other and stuff like that. They were drugged up last night. (laughs) Son of jackass, Johnny Knoxville is catapulted into a lake, and then Rip Taylor does his shtick, saying it's the end of the film. All right, the end credits last about eight minutes with various clips. Uh, Ryan passes his toy car, and it's a Christmas miracle. And then there's a bunch of quick hitters, which is like a highlight reel of unseen stuff uh, from the film, plus different camera angles from the stunts you did see in the original film. It's actually one of the best parts of the film, while the misfits play in the background. The final part, which is really Son of Jackass, is all the guys in old man costumes in what is supposed to be 2063, and then everything's exploding around them. Steve-O is the only survivor, which is supposed to be the punchline, since he always does the craziest stunts usually and isn't expected to survive. All right, there were some outtakes. I'll give you the best of. There was a karate class in Japan. Uh, Pontius acted as a lifeguard with alligators wearing bunny ears. Uh, Preston as a mermaid. Uh, Party boy dancing in the middle of a downtown street. And then Preston gets a haircut that says, eat fuck. All right, some fun facts. The film was shot in Westchester, Pennsylvania, New York, Miami, Orlando, England, Los Angeles, Mexico, Japan, and the Pacific Northwest. Originally, the Jackass franchise was going to be put in a retirement after this movie, and Jeff Tremaine just wanted to focus on other projects. But after Johnny Knoxville kept appearing on Wild Boys, Jeff Tremaine went to Knoxville and asked if he wanted to bring Jackass back, who was eager to do so. Now, the reason for filming extensively in Japan is that the laws requiring non-consenting participants to have their faces blurred out do not apply in Japan. According to Steve-O, the Jackass cast barely got paid anything by Paramount in the first movie. He said in a podcast interview that he only made $65,000 on a film that grossed over $80 million. What a jackass. All right, is this film for everyone? As I said, no, but it's probably you're probably laugh just hearing me read these descriptions. So you might like some of the stunts, as the reviews said way back when. Roger Ebert didn't bother to give a review, as you would expect. Uh, but yeah, there's some really funny stuff in there. I would say the, grand, the grandpa parts are the best. And then Bam and his parents are always good as well. Okay, if you didn't like this, fret not. I'll be back next week with a random movie, a real movie, <laughs> from my DVD collection. Come hang out and chill with Brian A. Davis and the Bad Beat. Wednesdays, 11 p.m. Eastern, right here on ThatMetalStation.com. 